Okay, let's uh, get moving on with uh, Rosh Hashanah. Okay, so we're discussing the various different customs of eating the various different food, what type of foods you don't eat. Now, Shachris, in the mo- you have to remember in the benching to say Yalav Now, in the, in the morning, you have Shachris, and you have a few additions, you know, before Baruch you say Shira Malis, Mimamakim for the 10 days, you have to add a Melech HaKadosh, you know, all those things. Uh, in the morning, you have, what's it called? You have uh, Vino Malkeinu after Shachris. Now, there's no Halel. We don't say Halel on Rosh Hashanah, even though it's a Yom Tif, and it's Rosh I mean, we should say Halel. So, Shechun it says, because it's Yem Din, it's days of judgment. So, therefore, how are you going to sing praise when you're being judged in court? You know, you don't, uh, you don't do those things. Okay, then you have Kriya Sotayda, so you take out two safe potatoes, whatever they should be rolled before Yom Tif to make sure they're in the right place. Okay, now let's go up, by the way, um, the Nigan for laning Yom, Rosh Yom Kippur has a different, unique, except Mafter, even most people do Mafter the, um, also with the same term. Our meaning is that the, the Mafter you do with the regular Torah trap that you do a whole year. Okay, let's talk about Tkiyas, because that's the biblical mitzvah of the day. Okay, now it says in, in Halacha, the expression, al Rebbe brings it down in the city, you should prepare yourself with Tkiyas Shefer. Okay? Now, there's two primary blowings. There's before Musaf, that's called Tkiyas Meyushav, sitting Tkiyas. Then you have the Tkiyas that you blow in the repetition of the Shemun that's called Kiyas Mo'umid. Now, in many circles, many shuls, they do not blow Shefer during the quiet Amida, during the quiet Shemonesri. They only blow Shefer in the repetition of the Shemonesri. Our custom is we blow, according to Kabbalah, we blow during the quiet Shemonesri of Musaf and in the repetition of the, of the Musaf. Now, we said before, the ones that are before Musaf are called Kiyas Meyushav. And the other ones are called Kiyas Mo'umad. What are differences are there between the two? So number one, the name itself, Kiyas Meyushav, means the sitting Kiyas, which means according to Aloha, it's not done like that, but according to Aloha, <clears throat> the people listening to Shefer are allowed to sit. Only the blower has to stand. When he makes the brachas, everybody has to stand. But once he starts blowing, technically nobody does it today. But halachically, they're allowed to sit. Therefore, it's called Tkiyas Meushev. Tkiyas Meumad, in the Shemun and the repetition, then every, halachically, everybody has to stand. Even in the repetition ones, you have to stand for the Tkiyas. That's difference number one. One second. Difference number two is custom, it's brought down in the three differences in different places. That Tkiyas Meushev, the custom is to blow from the bima where you read the Torah. Tkiyas Mu'umad, the standing Tkiyas, you can blow anywhere. Another <clears throat> difference out that ever brings down, in oh, one second, between oh, Tkiyas Mu'umad and Yushav, is we know when you blow the Shvarim Trua, so do you take a break between the Shvarim and the Trua, or is it one long one? So because of different customs, al Rebbe says, the minig is, and this is our minig, that in the Tkiyas Meyushav, the ones before Mosef, you blow Shvarim Trua together. You blow Shvarim Trua together. In Tkiyas Meumad, in the Shvan and in the repetition, then you blow them with a short breath between Shvarim and Trua. Okay, that's the three differences between Tkiyas Meyushav and Tkiyas Meumad. Now, just very briefly, what did you want to ask? Uh, what happened that it changed that most people stand now by the... Why don't people stand when they blow Shafer in Elul? They don't have to. No. Because, they, don't because they do. Yeah, why, why do they do? Because they do it. <laughs> but because of, because of the Shivas of Rosh Hashanah, I mean the Shafer, you know what I'm saying. No, but the second, the Nomad, the other one, you, the first one you do from the Bima, the second one from what? Wherever the guy stands. And for Mitzayim, we do it like... You blow them together. You blow it together. Yeah. 
I thought the people stand up in Kiyat Shofar in Enur because they are on the way out. Because they are on the way out the door, that's true. That has to be. They could both all be moment. But I'm saying they're called Tkiyas Miyushev because you're allowed to sit. That's what Miyushev means. You're allowed to sit. Tkiyas Miyushev, you have to stand. Yeah. If you're sitting by Chazar Sashats, of Musaf, right? Which people do. When they blow shaifa, you have to stand up in the repetition, I'm talking. The obvious in the question is you're standing anyway. I mean, you can't sit. I'm saying even more so in the repetition of the Shmanesri. You have to stand up even though you're sitting. Because it has to do with the Shemineser. In Shemineser you're standing. So it has to be, the Brachas is standing. Okay, now, the, halachically, let's explain the concept of Tkia Shefer. When you blow Shefer, there's, in the Torah it just says, Vavartem Shefer Trua. You have to blow a Trua. Okay, that's what the Torah says. You have to blow a Trua. The fact that it says the word Trua three times, teaches us that you have to blow three trua. Okay? Three times trua. From Yevel, the Gemara learns out that each, each trua needs what we call tkia before and the tkia after. Which means, biblically, the mitzvah of Shefa and Rosh Hashanah is tkia, trua, tkia, tkia, trua, tkia, Tkia, Teruah, Tkia. That is the biblical mitzvah of Shefer. It says in Shon Aruch that there was a, in the extent, which is difficult to understand, Lapel, but the bottom line is, through the extension of Golus, people forgot what does a Teruah mean. It's one of three possibilities. One is, Shavarim, I mean, Teruah means somebody moaning. How do you moan when you kvetch? You go, uh, 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 that's how you kvetch. So that is what we call shvarim. Other opinions say, no, a trua means a person crying. How do you cry? Do, 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 do. That's the way you cry. And one opinion says it's both together. You have to do both together. So therefore, when you blow shayifan, you want to cover all opinions. So you blow Tkia, Shvarim, Trua, Tkia three times because maybe Trua is Shvarim, Trua together. Then maybe it's what we call Shvarim, so you blow three times Tkia, Shvarim, Tkia. And maybe it is what we call Trua, so you blow three times Tkia, Trua, Tkia. Okay, that's the reason why, besides Kabbalistically, I'm talking just Halacha now. So Halacha, the reason why you blow what we call Tashrat, Tashat and Tarat, we blow each one three times. Now, why can't we just blow three times Tashrat, Tkir Shvarim Tru Tkir, and then you cover everything? Because you got them all covered. So Allah says you can't do that. Why can't you do that? Because the Tkir before and after, what the Gemara calls called Pashut, the Tkir before and after has to be right before and right after. You can't have anything in between. So let's say the real definition of trua is what we call shvarim. If what we call shvarim, then you're going to blow tkia and shvarim, but then the trua is a hefsik between the shvarim and the second tkia. Or if it's really trua, the shvarim is a separation between the first tkia and the trua. So therefore, you have to blow all the sets of Tkir Shvarim Tru'ah Tkir three times, Tkir Shvarim Tkir three times, Tkir Tru'ah Tkir three times. Okay? Then, in the Quiet Shman Asrei, each round you blow ten, like we do Elul, Tashrat, Tashatarat, three times in the Shman Asrei, three times in the repetition, and then 
in the middle of the Kaddish, Kaddish at the end, you blow another 10. So if you make that Cheshben, you have 100 sounds of the Shefer. You have 30 before Musaf, 30 during the quiet Musaf, 30 between the repetition of the Musaf, and 10 in the Kaddish, so you have 100 sounds of the Shefer. It's called Meo Kailis. Okay? Why, what's the Indian of the Meo Kailis? Not only that, if you break it down, if you break it down, in the, in the 100 Kailis, you, you end up having 60 Tkiyas, 30 Shvarim, and 30, no, 60, 20, and 20, I'm sorry, 60, 20, and 20, which is the same gematria of Schach, which we learned already is a connection between Rosh Hashanah and Sukkot, because Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur accomplish it through seriousness, Sukkot accomplishes the same thing with Simcha, so you have, and when you blow Shefer, you have 60, 20, 20, and then you have 100, besides the Kabbalistic uh, meanings of all that stuff, with the 100 powers of the Neshama, whatever. 10 times 10. Okay, so that's the story why we blow. Now, when you blow Shefer, it says in Allah, you really have to learn the halachas before you blow Shefer, to know all the dinim. But primarily it's like this. The tkia of that one has to be as long as the truer of that one. So for instance, if the first set, kia shvarim, truer, tkia. So what's the trua? We say because we don't know shvarim, trua together. That means the tkia has to be as long as your shvarim, trua is going to be. In the tkia of tashat, kia shvarim, tkia, then it has to, only has to be as long as the shvarim. And in the tkia of the trua one, it has to be as long as the trua. Now, halachically, halachically, the three shvarim, how long should each, to who, to who, to, how long should that be? Nine No. All together nine. It has to be at least three, not more, because if it's more, then it becomes a tkia. And it has to be a shvarim. So you have to blow a shvarim, and this for the people blowing, needing to know these halachas. And then if you get, make a mistake in the middle, there's a lot of halachas what you need to know about this. But anyway, so when you blow the first kia, it has to be as long as the shvarim tru. Now the shvarim can only be as long as three truas. Tru, 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 tru. Because if you make it longer, then it's a question if it's a tkiya. So you have to be short. It has to be, the shvarim cannot be too long and not too short. If it's too short, it's a tru. It has to be long enough that it's at least three truas, but not very long. Trua, halachically, you need to blow minimum of nine. Minimum of nine. In halacha, you could blow as many as you want. The rabbeim had a different amount. Every rabbi, different years, everything was uh, with cheshbonis. How many truas they blew? So, so you have to make sure the trua is at least nine tututus. The shvarim has to be three, not four. Even though the Alter brings us shnorach also that. He says, Yashnaya again, that's our minig, that you blow at the end of the third shvarim, you blow it through it. So, tuhutu, 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 just a short through it. The last of the nine, not the last of the eight. Three. No, the last of the three shvarim. When you blow the shvarim, because there's a lot of even different how the rabbi and blow it. Tuhutu, 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 at the end is it. Which is a that's our meaning. Anyway, so then you have to uh, just be careful to listen to the kiss. Now the brachas that you say on the tkiyas shefer really go for all the tkiyas through the shmonasri repetition. So ideally, ideally you should not talk unless if it's things pertaining to davening that you're allowed to talk, like you're not to announce pages or whatever it may be that you're allowed to do. But um, you have to be careful, ideally, not to talk from the beginning of Sh Shaifar until yeah. Arminik is, Arminik is really until the end of the last 
30 that you blow all the way at the end of Mosul. Sometimes the Rebbe did, sometimes the Rebbe didn't. Like, but Berchus Kayanim, after Berchus Kayanim, the Rebbe would always say, Ashkar after the Kayanim. But after Berchus Kayanim, he didn't, because there's still middle of Shafer, in middle of Kaddish, there's another 10. So most of the years, the Rebbe didn't tell you Ashkar after the Kayanim until the end of the 30, at the end of David, all the way at the end. There were times that the Rebbe said Yashkar before the last 30, but whatever. That's the story. Okay. Machachin is a maizum and mechabeba mine kim shivla gal tero. Hanan will cash him a dot in the box of that